Today's Torah portion that we're reading is partly still connected to the Mo Moses who is still standing on the mountain. If we look into Exodus 24, In verse 18, we're reading the following. So, Exodus 24, chapter 24, verse 18. It's written, it is written that Moses entered the cloud and went up to the mountain, and Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Look at chapter 31, verses 18. Chapter 31, verse 18. So once again, Exodus 31, verse 18. When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he, the two tab tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God, he gave to Moses. And afterwards, Moses went to his people, to the nation, and he saw something that he didn't expect to see there, didn't want to see there. The sin of Israel. But between the end of 24 and the beginning of chapter 31, Moses is still on the mountain, 40 days and 40 nights. What is he doing there? God speaks to him. God says something very important to him. Ten Commandments were already said. They were written on the stones. Forty days Moses is in the presence of God. It was a unique time for him. He spent it in the presence of the Almighty. Can you imagine being in his place? If you were in the presence of God like that, what would you want? You would want to hear something very special. If God has 40 days and 40 nights to tell you something, Probably it should be something very, very, very important for God and for you. In this case, for Moses and for the nation of Israel. What is God talking about? What commandments is He given to him? He says about the tabernacle, how it should look like, how it should be structured, from what? from what should it be built, 
about the altar, about the way it should be arranged. He talks about building. How should the place of worship be looked? How should the place of worship look like? He gives Moses a special vision. He shows something. He says something. Uh, he says how the um, the priests should wear, what they should be anointed with, and how they should smell. We don't want to know that, but Moses had to to know that. I have no idea. I can't comprehend. You have 40 days. Talk about love, about ethical principles. Love your enemy, love your neighbor. Don't do anything evil. He, he talked about that too. But why just to waste time on talking about tabernacle? That is meant to be there only 40 days in the desert, 40 years in the desert. And then there should be something new, such as temple. Today I won't talk a lot about the tabernacle and how it was arranged and why. There are different commentaries that explain the meaning of the tabernacle, of all the elements, the clothes. I want to briefly look into chapter 28. Where God tells Moses about making clothes for Aaron. It's kind of talking about building, about uh, about making clothes, some sewing fa factory, clothes factory. In, in chapter 28, verse 3, he says, You shall speak to all the skillful, whom I have filled with the spirit of skill, that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. Wait, wait, wait. To make clothes, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Seriously? Look at your clothes. I'm not sure, like, the brand is nice, but I'm not sure that uh, Holy Spirit had anything to do with it. And here, you needed to be skilled, skillful and wise. But they also needed to be filled with the Spirit in order to do that. In order to make clothes. Because those are holy clothes. And this is how God shows it. So let's look into chapter 31 again. Let's read starting from verse 1. 
so verse 1 through 11. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed him with him Oholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. And I have given to all able men ability, that they may make all that I have commanded you. Let's pause here. So Exodus 31 verses 1 through 6 in German once again. And here he lists everything that they need to do. The tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils and the pure lampstand with all its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils and the basin and its stand and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest and the garments for his sons for their service as priests and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded you they shall do. So Exodus 31 verses 7 through 11. Let's briefly look into chapter 25, verse 40. The God, God tells Moses when he describes, uh, describes how the tabernacle should be built and so on. And see that you make them after the pattern for them, which is being shown you on the mountain. What was shown to him on the mountain? The pattern. Like we know from Messianic writings from of New Testament. Moses could see some sort of a pattern of the heavenly holy place. And he needed to do to do in such a way that was shown to him. I don't think he entered the holy the holy place in the heavens. I don't think he saw it very well. He saw the pattern of it. Similarly, like Jesus is in his flesh was the pattern of God or the sign, the, the 
the sign for God, similar to man and woman together being um, being an example of God, likeness of God. So Moses saw the likeness of the temple. Yeshua was the likeness of God. Man and woman is the likeness of God, and the similar in a similar fashion, Israel is supposed to be likeness of God, and the community of believers is supposed to be the pattern and likeness of God. Moses was shown how he needs to do everything, and he had to do it. We read, uh, it was said something about Moses' skills. He, w he worked hard. He was very educated, highly educated. He was a good leader. And he had a vision. He was a visionary. Something was shown to him. What do we know about Moses from Torah? What he himself talks about him? He wasn't a great speaker. That's why God said that he's given him Aaron. Where Moses was weak, God found somebody to help him, to do it with him. We don't know that Moses was very um, crafty, that he could build something. That information we don't have. Can you imagine that Moses would see, see whatever he saw, the, the pattern, and started building it? without any abilities, any skills. What would it look like? Would it be worthy of God? If he ran the whole work, if he ran the whole work and said, can you bring me this type of wood? We're going to work on it that way. When I think about that, I remember um, an anecdote. It happened in my life, twice in my life. I uh, stayed overnight in a tent that I made myself, that I put together myself. It was probably not as difficult a tent as Moses needed to build. But I had to stay there overnight with my daughters. It was when I was in Dallas long t long time ago. It's been almost 20 years. So I then there with other believers. It was some sort of a camping father-daughter, father-daughter camping. There were only fathers and only daughters. I didn't have a tent, so they gave me one. And I was shown how to put it together. I was told, I was explained everything. I watched how others did that with the same tent. I was asked, do you need some help putting it together? I said, no, no, of course not. I can do it myself. But my daughters were there, so I had to, I had to look cool. I, I managed myself. So I did. And at night there was a storm. Yeah, so I, I set the tent. 
I um, made sure it's uh, it's the way it should be. It, I did it like that twice, two years. And God apparently has a sense of humor. So, two years, one night each year. And those were nights when uh, there was a storm. People who were there, they said, we do something like this for many years. But it's never happened. It's very rare. The storm in Dallas at that time, especially at those nights when we were there, third time they didn't invite me, third year. And there was no storm. Smart people, they had nice time, they rested well. But that was also my decision not to go. I said, I'd rather go with my daughters to a, to a hotel. Because those two nights, the tent was kind of floating. I put it in, together in such a way that it, it didn't survive the storm. And then I thought, all right, it's not my thing. So if you want to set a tent, I can show you how it should look like, but don't you don't want me to do it in, instead of you. I saw the way it should have been, but I couldn't do it. I'm happy that Moses didn't do stuff himself in this case. Because if Moses was in charge, all people around them would have laughed, would have cringed. Uh, because of this this weird tabernacle, this um, tilted tabernacle. But God also didn't want Moses to do it alone. He didn't give him wisdom for that, no skill, nor the spirit. Can you imagine? Mo Moshe Rabbeinu, our great Moses, saw God fa almost face to face. But for this work job, he didn't have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He had it for many different things, to see, to speak, to, to pass, to, to run, to be in charge, but not for this work. And this is why the Lord prepared other people for this job. Even more so, He appointed them for this work. And in chapter 31 we read that He gave those people, in verse 3 we read, that he gave them the Spirit of God, intelligence. Chapter 31, verse 3. He gave them the Spirit of God, intelligence, knowledge, and craftsmanship, all craftsmanship. He gave that to the 
to the leader of the work, to the foreman, so to say, and others, in order to serve God. In order to serve God the way He wants. To build the house of God. And I don't mean the stone building. I mean what Apostle Paul wrote in the letter to Ephesians chapter 2. The house is built out of us, of us. In order for community of believers to grow, different people are needed. Different ministries are needed. Different gifts different talents and callings are ne needed. It's what I see in this chapter, chapter 31 of Exodus. Moses saw and Basil didn't see it. Moses was on the mount, he was shown the pattern, Basilel wasn't there. Moses told him what, what was supposed to be built and how it was supposed to look like. Without Basilel and others, Moses couldn't build anything, couldn't have built anything. But Basil and others without Moses couldn't also do anything. Without Moses, they wouldn't know what to build. But Moses without others couldn't physically do what he knew about. And this just underlines this important this important idea, important fact, we need each other. And there is no more important or less important ministry. I've mentioned that multiple times, but today I want to stress it once again. Because the, uh, the the chapter talks about it. We need each other so that we can build the congregation together to build the universal congregation together. I cannot do anything without you. You without me probably also cannot do anything. And everybody can say it in such a way, not just me, my ministry, I'm standing here and I'm talking, I'm addressing you. I mentioned that before, but I can repeat myself. Most of you, many of you wouldn't understand me if Katya wasn't standing there next to me and wouldn't translate. Most of you wouldn't hear me if the microphone wouldn't work, if the microphone didn't work, if somebody didn't turn it on and didn't adjust the volume, if somebody didn't buy it, if somebody didn't, didn't give money for it, didn't donate. Most of you wouldn't see me and not and even hear if somebody didn't turn on the camera and the streaming. And maybe nobody would be even able to see it in the as a recording if somebody didn't cut the video, didn't edit it, didn't put it together.
if somebody didn't didn't make it in such a way that everything works online, it would be very difficult to speak. I already spoke at one conference in the morning. If somebody didn't place this cup of this glass of water on this table, maybe uh, my uh, my throat would go dry and I wouldn't be able to say anything. If somebody didn't clean the bathrooms, maybe I wouldn't even be able to use it. Because it wouldn't be smelling pleasantly. We need each other. Our ministry in this world, the building of this universal heavenly tabernacle, So the creation of this universal congregation needs all of us. I couldn't do anything without you. And I couldn't achieve anything. And I wouldn't reach anyone. And you without me also. And every one of us can say the same thing. So let us value and appreciate each other because God gives different gifts, different talents, different callings. And to one he gives Holy Spirit for preaching and another person to make this building, this place look nice. And for somebody to stream this online, and for somebody to translate and interpret, for somebody to make sure the bikes are working, for somebody to sing, and for somebody to watch for order, for somebody to decorate, for somebody to to manage the place. And the Holy Spirit gives all that. To some people he gives ability to pray, to pray for whatever's going on, to others to worship, to praise. And this list goes on and on. It doesn't have an end. But when we look into this chapter, we see that we need each other. And that to build whatever God is showing, to build what God expects us to build, and build in a way that He wants, He expects us to, we can only with each other's help, when we appreciate and value the ministry of others, when we respect each other, when we support each other, and act according to the gifts and callings of God. This chapter, chapter 31 of Exodus, verse 1 through 11, reminds me of uh, the sec uh, sixth chapter of the Acts. So, Acts 6, verses 1 through 4. Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Now in these days, when disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews, 
because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it's not right that we should give up preaching, that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you, among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I think you can see the parallel. What did Moses do mostly? What is he most known for? Moses gave us Torah. It's something that he was occupied with. He went to God for a long time, not just those 40 days. He entered the presence of God. God spoke to him. Moses would talk, would give this word, these words to Israel. That's how the Torah was given. He had some sort of direct communication to God. And others built. Many, many of the people who were there that God called built the tabernacle. This is something we see in this, in this chapter. Apostles remained in the prayer and the ministry of the word. And others were given a task to distribute food. To distribute food, we understand. You need to be wise. Probably wisdom is very useful there. You need to have skill. But as we see here, to distribute food, you need to be full of spirit. Very often people, uh, this place is interpreted that, that those people were generally filled with spirit, very spiritual people, always filled with the spirit. But if we make this parallel to Torah, then the, we are talking not just to general, not about general filling of the spirit, but wise, skillful, and filled with the spirit for this particular task. And in such a way, the congregation in Jerusalem lived and continued to develop. And great miracles happened. The Holy Spirit, even today, through, through, through Yeshua, through Jesus, can fill the person and give them ability to speak, to preach, to interpret, to sing, to praise, to pray, to teach, to evangelize, to stream the preaching online, to work with the mics, 
to, uh, to change slides, to arrange the chairs, to clean, to buy stuff. The list goes on and on. And all of that comes from the spirit. Let's value the work of the spirit in each person. And let us not quench the spirit within ourselves, but act according to, to what God calls us to. And as a final place, I want to read from, from Epistles to Hebrews, chapter 9. Hebrews 9. Verse 23, 24. We read here about what Jesus did for us. Thus, it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. So when we talked about pattern or likeness, the word here is the copy. Yeshua entered the real thing. Not what Moses saw. not what was built by Basil and others. Smart, skilled, filled with spirit. He entered what was built by God himself. He entered the place with his own blood. He sacrificed himself there so that we could live, so we could receive forgiveness, so that he would be our advocate, so that we could have an eternal life, so that we could be with each other and to serve together. He entered the place once and forever. And we praise him for that. Let's follow Yeshua to this heavenly place together. We're serving him together until he comes back again. May he bless us with unity, ministry, and and the filling of spirit in the areas where he appointed us to serve amen Shiru 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 shiru